The following You and the Law program is provided as a public service of the Chicago Bar Association. The statements made and views expressed in this program are those of the participants. The participants' views do not necessarily reflect the views of the Chicago Bar Association. This program is for informational purposes only. It does not provide legal advice. Welcome. I'm Vic Henderson, president of the 22,000 member Chicago Bar Association, and welcome to this edition of You and the Law. On this show, we get to talk to some of the leading, most prominent lawyers here in the city of Chicago who are influential not only in the courtroom, uh, but in the lives of many of us on a day to day basis. Uh, today's guest is Ed Burnett, who is the public defender uh, for the County of Cook. He has been the public defender since 2003. Uh, and in that role, he's responsible for not only supervising hundreds of lawyers, but in an indirect and direct sense, uh, responsible for the lives of men and women who are facing uh, criminal charges ranging from misdemeanors all the way up to felony uh, murder charges. Ed, welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Ed, tell, tell me a little bit about your background. Where, where were you raised? Where are you from? <coughs> well, I'm a Chicago native. I was. Uh, born and raised on the west side of Chicago, uh, <clears throat> had plans on going into the Marine Corps, decided to go to the United States Naval Academy, and uh, I found out about the Naval Academy because I played football, so I was recruited and uh, played football at the Academy and went into the Marine Corps after the Naval Academy. How has being a Marine affected your personality, most notably as being a lawyer? Well, <clears throat> I spent the early part of my adult life in the Marine Corps, so it's had a, a, a dominant effect on my personality. And uh, I still govern myself pretty much according to the, the tenets I learned in the Marine Corps. Which were? You know, you work hard, you, you follow orders, you do what you're told, and uh, when you're working with people who are, are working for what's believed to be a noble cause, you bond together and there's a, a, a brother and a sisterhood uh, of working for a, a common goal that is more important than any one individual. Now, now I want to pick up on something you said. Speaking of doing as you're told, who appointed you as the public defender? Uh, the Honorable John Strozier, who was president of the county board. In, in 2003. And so is it true now that you're a direct report now to Todd Stroger? I am uh, a creature of statute. Uh, our office is in my position is created by statute so administratively I'm attached to the Bureau of Administration which is part of the president's office. Uh, in terms of accountability I have accountability to the Board of Commissioners of course but in my practice, uh, due to the fact that a, a public defender office has to have a, autonomy and independence, uh, my accountability is mainly to the court. I'm an officer of the court. Okay. Tell me, how many lawyers are in the, in the public defender's office? We're budgeted for 463. Presently, we have uh, 430. Okay. And how many cases does your office handle in, in a calendar year? Uh, approximately 400,000. All right, and tell us about those cases. Uh, approximately 90,000 of those cases are felonies, handled uh, principally at 26 in California, but they're also handled at five other municipal districts in the county. Uh, about 310,000 are misdemeanors, which are handled in all six municipal districts in the county. So you all represent people accused of both misdemeanors and felonies? And felonies and death penalty. Okay. Cases, and the, but the felonies are ones that really wind up in the in the headlines. Yes, per, pretty much. And when you say felonies for our audience, tell me what those are. Those are offenses where you will receive more than a year uh, confinement, which means that it will be served at a penitentiary as opposed to a jail. A jail, a jail is essentially a detention facility. Okay. Mo most people are there awaiting trial, but for some misdemeanors, you can be sentenced. 
uh, to jail and you would spend your sentence there. And with respect to the felonies, what kind of crimes are we talking about? We're talking about burglary, robbery, uh, aggravated battery, uh, aggravated assault. Now you say you get hundreds of thousands of cases a year. Yes. And you only have 400 some odd lawyers who are handling those cases. So clearly those lawyers have to be stretched. Yes. Case loads are too high. Uh, we are presently averaging above the national standards for misdemeanors and felonies. Let's stick with the felonies. What's the national average in terms of what they want to see a, a, a typical public defender handle in terms of felony cases? Uh, not more than 150 appointments per year. And how many are the folks in your office handling? We range from 245 to 315, depending on where we are. So would it be fair to say then that the public defenders have two times the number of cases that they should have based on what's recommended by national averages? That's correct. <clears throat> How does that affect the representation that the innocent people are receiving in your office? In two ways. One, cases take longer to try. And I'll get back to that in just a second. But the second thing is uh, when you have too many cases, you don't treat that individual, uh, which is our client, our customer, as well as you should. Now, the representation may be what it should within the, be within the four walls of the courtroom, and that is the motions that should be filed are filed, the objections that should be made are made. When the case is before the judge, things are done as they should, but it takes longer to get there when you have too many cases. So that means that an individual could possibly spend six months in waiting for trial when it could be resolved in two and a half months. So not only is it taking longer, but also the, the, the care or the attention that each individual client should receive has to be affected in some way by the number of cases. It is affected. In fact, our biggest challenge is how we interact with our clients. So would you agree with me then with the conclusion that there are people who are represented by the public defender's office who are getting what I would call substandard representation? I wouldn't call it substandard <clears throat> representation. I would call it uh, representation that is, uh, doesn't look upon our clients as customers. And in many cases, I think that they get uh, the best representation available, but it comes slow. Tell me about the clients that are being represented by uh, the PD's office and break it down in terms of male, female, black, white, Hispanic. I would say 85 to 90 percent of our clientele are, are non-white. Uh, I don't know exactly what the breakdown is between Latino and black. Uh, there is an increasing amount of uh, women involved in, in felony cases, uh, but the majority of our clients are male. And all the time when, you're, when your lawyers are in the office, they're going up against the state's attorney's office, is that right? That's, that's correct. Okay, and is it your opinion or impression that the resources that the state and that the county provide for the state attorney's office and the public defender's office to move cases through the system are equal or do or are you of the opinion that the state attorney's office gets more well it's obvious to me that the state's attorney gets more <clears throat> and in some cases we not only have to contend with the state's attorney but also the public guardian and uh, child protection why do you think the state's attorney's office gets more resources to prosecute cases than your office gets to defend cases? Well, because they're law enforcement and people more readily identify with the law and, law and order part of the criminal justice equation. And individuals, although increasingly now somebody in, some, in your family or somebody that you know is involved with the criminal justice system, not a lot of people care about the people that I, re I represent. 